I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. Some of you listened, some of you didn't. Shout out to my homie Joseph Cordonero. Um, he sent this link to me, and uh, you know, I just I sat back and I and I, and I read this link. He, I mean, the coach read this link, and and I got to tell you, um, <laughs> I was kind of happy with what I was hearing. So finally, this this wife beater, right? This guy that beat his wife, and that, that's what we're gonna call him. We're gonna call this guy a wife beater. Okay, and, and you should too. Like, this guy slapped his wife in front of the world, okay? And he was given a pass. For the first time, I feel like karma. For the first time in my life, I feel like karma is finally starting to just circle back and do what it needs to do for the likes of Dana White. <laughs> karma. Oh, my goodness. Well, not karma. Isn't this something? guy can slap his wife, slap her up real good. And I know some some people that defend Dana White and defend guys like Dana White who look like him. You're going to defend Dana White and say, well, she hit him first. <laughs> no, but I thought that we should not put our hands on women. Uh-uh, you can't have it both ways. See, you can't have it when the black dude slaps up a woman. You don't get to go back and say we shouldn't put our hands on women if... And I say if, if you're going to give a complete pass to Dana White for him slapping up his woman like this, how you going to explain this? See, I'm going to tell you guys the raw truth on why this is going down, okay? I'm going to tell you guys the raw truth why it's going down. The thing of it is, guys, WME, they're tired of Dana White. They're sick of this guy. They're sick of him. And they're to the point, man, where... They got so much backlash for Dana White slapping his wife. I'm telling y'all. But I told a lot of you guys this that this isn't just going to go away for Dana White. The WME, they, they, they got so much backlash about Dana White slapping up his old lady. So much backlash that, you know, something had to be done. But moreover, let's, let's go ahead and talk. You know, the, the UFC, they got all these antitrust lawsuits. I mean, they got people trying to sue these guys out the wazoo. It's too much stuff going on. Then you got Dana White putting down a product. And I told y'all, some people used to come in here and say, oh, man, anybody that gets into a few with Dana White, it just it helps their profile. No, that's not good for business. When you got the CEO of a company putting down your talent, when you got the promoter of your company putting your talent down, <laughs> guys, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad business. Because you're putting down your own product. Like, how was that ever good business? I, I used to, like, un try to understand the guys that would say that this was good for business and good for these fighters' portfolios and profiles when Dana White got into a feud with them. I, man, I, I, I just shake my head and just, you know, I don't know. I just shake my head. Like, damn, are these people serious? But this is what Dana White did. This is what he does. All the lawsuits, man, it's a ton of lawsuits going on. And the U uh, WME, they finally said, you know what? I'm done. Like, we've had enough. They're actively, they want to replace him. Now, replacing a guy like Dana White isn't going to be as easy as them just getting him out of there. Okay? They're going to have they, they're gonna pay him a boatload of money to get rid of him. Okay? They have to pay him a whole lot of money to get rid of him. A lot. And I mean, you know, if they do get rid of Dana White, yeah, it'll be good. Okay, and Joseph Cordonero asked me, well, who do you think? Okay, who do you think should actually run the company? I think it ought to be, in my opinion, it, it should be Sean Shelby. I think Sean Shelby should actually be the CEO. But tell you why. Sean Shelby ain't getting in a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. He's very professional. When he's being interviewed, I mean, does the most professional interviews. Have you ever seen a Dana White interview? I mean, some of the most unprofessional stuff that you could do. Like, just unprofessional. Even sometimes the way he speak. Sean Shelby, he's extremely profess uh, professional. Or, or even Nick Maynard. Like, let Sean Shelby and Nick Maynard run the company. Let them do it. 
they probably do a damn better job. Okay, you probably be able to actually, you know, negotiate with these guys. We probably get some of the fights that we really want to see with these guys. Probably. And I'm not saying I'm not hanging my hat on that. But what I am saying is that, you know, hey, this it's, pro it's time for change. It's time for change. Like Dana White got so much stuff going on, y'all. That's not even funny. And, 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 and you know, and, and the real truth is, OK, with all these antitrust lawsuits going on. They never going to get out the water in this, man. They, they not. And then and, and moreover, you know, another thing is, is fighter compensation. You know, I'm looking at this article and I'm like, wait a minute. So the NFL, okay, the NBA, and Major League Baseball, they can pay damn near 50% of the revenue to the players. But the UFC only paid like about 14.5% of the revenue. Like to, to, to the fighters, that, that's crazy. Well, I mean, at least we know why Dana White's been able to be in business so long, okay? We know. Dana White been pimping all, he been pimping them. And guess what? I can't put it all on Dana White because when these fighters, they get that UFC contract, oh, they are happy. They're elated to get this contract. They're elated to get the contract. And so they sign. They sign because, oh, it's the UFC. Oh, you know, I get to wear that, 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 that Venom uniform. Yep, I get to be a part of the company. I'm a part of this. Yeah, I'm somebody. That's, that's what these fighters think. I am somebody now. And not realizing that they really are being pimped. They're being pimped hard. But what are you going to do about it? Because if the fighters accept it, they accept it. And moreover, they start, you know, this article is breaking down numbers like fighters like Conor McGregor. You know, everybody talk about like, ooh, McGregor make all this money. Man, they was talking about how severely undercompensated Conor McGregor was. Like severely undercompensated. Like making about 10% of the revenue on a pay-per-view that, you know, he's bringing in major amounts of pay-per-view. But then they only give him Conor McGregor like 10% of that. Like crazy, crazy, crazy. And Dana White used to have a saying. Used to have a saying. He said, uh, in this business, what do you say? Oh, you don't get to eat if ain't nobody in the seats. Yeah. In this business, you don't eat if ain't nobody in the seat. Like, that's what he used to say. Well, I mean, Conor McGregor, man, putting, like, people, man, putting major amounts of people in these seats. But, you know, no whiskey, man. <laughs> you know, Kate, uh, you know, the white, the woman beater. Oh, well, you know, I see why Dana like Conor McGregor now. He's a woman beater. Just like him. You know, John Jones, they talked about how much revenue John Jones brought in. And saying that these guys only making about $2.5 million a fight. But they bringing in like damn near what, <laughs> damn near hundred million dollars in revenue. Over fifty to sixty million dollars in revenue, okay. And then moreover, they talked about this Bud Light deal, how Bud Light and the UFC got like a hundred million dollar partnership going on, and guess how much money that do the fighters get? <laughs> Zero. Guess how much money do the fighters get for that crypto deal? Zero. The crypto deals were for $175 million. The fighters got zero of that. Bud Light is worth $100 million. The fighters got zero of that. I mean, all the sponsors that you see in the octagon, the fighters get zero of that. Nope, but they get that nice little Venom check, right? <laughs> that's, that's about less than 1% of all of that. They get that Venom check. Yeah, or they used to get a Reebok check. I used to have people say, man, what are you getting Reebok money and blah, blah. And do you know if these fighters were allowed to wear these sponsors, they can make like damn near like five times as much money as a, as a Reebok uh, a sponsorship deal that they get. They get that Reebok and or they used to get that Venom money. They get the Venom. They can make five times that much just on sponsorships alone. I mean, I don't know, man. It's like when people see the UFC, when they see the logo, and these fighters, man, it's like they they start getting hot flashes. You know, they start, you know, getting like erections and 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 just all kind of stuff because they're in the UFC. Like, what the? Are you serious? Like, just because you're in the UFC, like they think they made it. I used to have fighters, man. I used to kick it with, and I, I, I swear to God, the minute they sign a UFC contract, 
they started acting like they ain't got to kick it with you no more. Oh, man, hey, well, you got to talk to my manager before you talk to me. Hey, man, I had to talk to your manager. I ain't been talking to your manager. I didn't have to talk to your manager, you know, when I gave you $300. And this, this, this real. I had a fighter, you know, matter of fact, I donated. Our, my, my channel, we donated, I think, $975 to this fighter. We donated $975. And I swear, this, hey, this fighter ain't need no manager when I was giving that money on the back end. But all of a sudden, the fighter signed a UFC contract. Then she talking about, well, if you reach out to me, you got to reach out to my manager first. Man, I just, I sat and I'm like, you got, you got to be out of your damn mind. Well, you know, the dumb heifer got cut anyway, so that's neither here nor there. Oh, and then after she gets cut, <laughs> then, you know, starts uh, thumbing up some of my social media posts and, hey, coach, how's it going? Man, I ignored that. Oh, I ignored it. I ignored it all. The real OGs, though, you know, shout out to Sabina Mazo. You know, shout out to them, man. See, I, you know, they, they never changed. They never changed, switched up on me. Martin Reno never switched up on me. Okay, they, they never switched up on me. None of them. Okay, they never switched it up on me. No matter what level of success they got within the UFC, they never switched it up on old coach. Never. I don't have fighters switch it up on me completely. But, you know, we don't want to drift off into that. Okay? They need to replace place Dana White with Nick Maynard or Sean Shelby. Like, that would be the obvious choice. They know the business back and forth. They know the fighters. They know the product. Put them in charge. They're very professional. They're extremely professional. Why not? Why not, man? I mean, I think it's time to get Dana White out because what he's doing, okay, what he's doing is we get a lot of fights, but then there are those fights that we never get to see. You know, even more over them doing business with other promotions. Okay, like, you know, it's, it's, it's cross-promotion fights that we want to see. Maybe if Dana White get out, maybe we finally can see Ngannou versus Jones. Before Francis Ngannou get aged out, before John Jones getting too old. You know, maybe we can see that fight if they, we move Dana out the way. That, that, that's what needs to happen. Like, it's passed him by, and, and him just, you know, like denigrating and taking from these fighters, taking and taking and taking and taking. What is he giving? And he can tell you that, oh, we, well, we pay more than any other promotion. Well, I mean, when you look at all the other promotions, they're not dominating the airwaves. So, of course, you can pay a little more. But I'm going to tell you, they can talk junk about the PFL all they want to. But I'm telling you, all the PFL got to do, man, if them Saudis keep putting that money behind that PFL and they really start believing in the PFL, I'm telling you, I keep telling you all the PFL can be a promotion that can rival the UFC in due time. Not right now, in due time. If they can get in top talent, if everybody just stick with it and don't jump off ship, the PFL can rival that of the UFC. They can rival it. And you know, those Saudis, they got infinite amounts of money. Okay? The UFC, they either going to need to change or organizations like the PFL, they're, they're going to begin to rival that. They're going to do it. It's just a matter of time. See, everything takes time. Everything takes time. But don't worry. Don't worry. I hope they get them out of there. I hope because, you know, they've they already been exchanging emails back and forth on what they're going to do to get them out. They need to. They need to go ahead, get this guy, send him on his way so the UFC can start doing things like they know that they need to. Like, you don't you don't want the damn chief operating officer of the promotion going at feuds with fighters. OK, like you don't want him getting up there doing a post fight interview and just down like down in fighters because they win the match. But somehow they don't give a violent performance. Some fighters got to win the fight the best way they can because of what the situation give them. Like, you don't want a promoter doing that, man. They do that enough in boxing, and you don't need it in MMA. I'm done.